Let's begin to praise our maker this evening. The Bible says that we should approach God's throne with praise and worship. Let's begin to praise and worship our maker this evening. Our heavenly father, we worship you. Father, we worship you this evening. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We worship you, Abba Father. We worship you, Alpha and Omega. We worship you. The I am that I am, we worship you. Father, we worship you in the beauty of your holiness. The one who is and is to come, we worship you. The one who has created all things, we worship you. The one who has given us life, we worship you. The one who has made it possible for us to live, we worship you. The one who has provided for us, we worship you. We worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We join the host of heavens this evening. We say holy, holy, holy is God almighty. Holy, holy, holy is God almighty. We join the elders in heaven. We join the universe, all the saints in the universe. We say holy, 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 holy is God almighty. Father, we worship you the beginning and the ending. We worship you. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you for who you are. We worship you for who you are. We worship you for who you are in our lives. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Our maker, we worship you. Our maker, we worship you. In one accord, we worship you. In one accord, we worship you. The totality of our being worships you. The totality of our being worships you. All that we have worships you. All that we are worships you. Father, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We prostrate before you this evening. We worship you. We prostrate before you this evening. We worship you for who you are. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We approach your throne this evening with your praise. We approach your throne this evening with worship. Father, we worship you. Thank you, Father, for acceptance of our praises and worship this evening. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' much less name. In Jesus' much less name. In the same vein, let's appreciate God for all the wonderful messages we've been hearing from this altar right from the beginning of the year. A lot of wonderful messages have been emanating from this altar. Let's appreciate God for such wonderful messages that have been coming from here, that have been defying us, that have been transforming us, that have been making us, taking us from where we were to where we are now. And is he taking us to where we ought to be? Let's appreciate him for the wonderful messages. Let's also appreciate him for the way he has been empowering his servants. For everyone that has been stepping on this altar, they've been ministering with power. God has been giving them power and utterance. Let's appreciate him for the utterance. Father, we appreciate you. 
for the utterance, Father. We appreciate you for the utterance. We appreciate you for the wonderful things we've been enjoying under this ministry. Thank you for the wonderful sermons. Thank you for the wonderful sermons we've been enjoying in this ministry. Thank you, Father. It has been power packed from the beginning of the year, Father, o King of Glory, for the way you have taken your servants that have been stepping on this altar from height to height. Everyone that has been stepping on this altar has been speaking nothing but undiluted word from you. Father, we appreciate you for the things we enjoy here. Thank you, Father, for the things we enjoy here. Thank you, Father, for the things we enjoy under this ministry. Father, we appreciate you. We appreciate you in the name of Jesus. Much less than we have prayed. In Jesus' name. In the course of the month, we have come to understand that. We have been made to understand that, first of all, one of the reasons we come to church is because we come to pray and to be prayed for. Another thing we also come to church for, we've been also made to understand that the church is like an assembly. So when we say the church is an assembly, it's a place where we come to legislate. So right now, we have come to where we are supposed to legislate this evening. Let's begin to legislate and begin to speak things into the lives of every member of this church. If there are persons in this place that are having difficulties with their jobs, having difficulties with their with their, with their businesses having one difficulty or the other, we have come to our leg legislative assembly. Let's begin to overturn these things in the lives of our fellow members in this place. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, O King of glory. We have come, O King of glory. We have gathered to legislate. Father, O King of glory, you say where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Father, we have gathered in your name and we have gathered, O King of glory, to decree things in the spiritual realm. Father, King of glory, this evening we declare amongst ourselves, whosoever that is going through job challenges, whosoever that is having challenges in his or her job, whosoever that is having challenges in business, Father, in the name of Jesus, whosoever that is having challenges in career, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. May you, O King of Glory, send your spirit and may your spirit resolve such issues for our members in the name of Jesus. For every member of this ministry that is having challenges with jobs, that is having challenges with career, that is having challenges with their businesses, that their business is not where they desire that business to be. Their career is not where it is. Uh, the desire their career to be. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. May you, King of glory, send your angels. May they begin to resolve those issues for them, for businesses that crave, that crave uh, improvement. Father, we pray, may you help that business grow. For careers that crave growth, may you help that those careers grow in the name of Jesus. For people who need changes in their jobs, Father, I pray, may you help them out in the name of Jesus. For as many who are going through difficult times in their jobs, Father, I pray for this, for the wisdom. We pray for the wisdom. We pray for the for the wisdom and knowledge to navigate those things in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray and we know that you've answered our prayers this evening. In Jesus' much less name we have prayed. In Jesus' much less name we have prayed. In the same authority as we are legislating this evening, we are also going to pray for as many that are weak, for as many that are overwhelmed by the difficulties surrounding the nation, for as many that are going through difficult times. Let's begin to pray this evening and ask God to strengthen them. May God strengthen as many amongst us that are weak, as many amongst us that are overwhelmed by the pressures of life, that are overwhelmed with the things happening around us, that God should strengthen every one of them. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit, O King of glory, your children to you. As many amongst us, O King of glory, that is overwhelmed by the pressures of life, that is overwhelmed by the pressures of life, that is overwhelmed by the things happening around us, Father. I pray may you begin to strengthen your children in the name of Jesus. May you strengthen your children in the name of Jesus. Those overwhelmed, those overwhelmed by the difficulties around. Father, I pray may you help them out in the name of Jesus. May you make a way, O King of glory. May you make a way for your children. Because your word says that you care about us and you care about all that we are going through. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray concerning this assembly. 
Father, we pray concerning this assembly. May your children who are going through difficult times, O King of Glory, receive strength right now. Father, they are strengthened, O King of Glory. They are strengthened, O King of Glory. They are strengthened, O King of Glory. They are strengthened, O King of Glory, to be able to navigate, O King of Glory, the difficult things they are experiencing, O King of Glory. Thank you, Father, because we know that you have answered our prayers this evening. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Finally, we are going to pray committing this service to God. The Bible says that wherever two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. And we have come to be edified. We have come not just to watch, but to be edified by, by God's word and everything that will be happening here today. Let's hand over today's service to God and ask God to take charge of everything that will be done here. And that no life to come into this place and go back the same way without being touched and transformed. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we hand over this service to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, from the beginning and every bit of what will be done here today, we hand over the service to you. Holy Spirit, may your power, may your power be felt today in the name of Jesus. May your spirit be felt here today in the name of Jesus. As many that will come discouraged, as many that will come tired, as many that will come weak, Father, may strength be made available unto them in the name of Jesus. As many that need the wisdom, the insight as to the next step to make, Father, may they not go back the same way in the name of Jesus. May power be made mightily available today in our service in the name of Jesus. From, the, from those who will be singing and to everything that will be done, may it be power packed in Jesus' much less name we have prayed. Amen. Can we just open our mouths and just pray in tongues tonight? Can we just raise a sound of praise to God even as we pray in tongues tonight? Mahi brade suteli gele breda rosata. Mahali brana kasuti kiara da rosete. Bregadi kiana na manasu brani kiara da rosa. Bregada da 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 bregarosa na mani ela rosa. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Mahali bregado supi kiana na mate. Oh Father, we bless you tonight. Le brena gana na diate. Bregadi Oh Father, we exalt you. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, we have come to seek you, to see your face, oh God, to hear your voice, oh God. We are not gathered unto man, but unto God. Can you yield your song to the Holy Spirit tonight? Can you worship God? Oh, Yahweh, we worship you. We worship you. Yahweh, we worship. We bless you, Lord, you are holy, and forever you are God. Oh, we bless you, Lord, you are holy, and forever.
worship before your show. We join the 20 and for hell that's to bow before you. Lord, help me with interpretation. The king that cannot be dethroned or overthrown. The mighty one that can never be defeated. Your reign is so pleasing to my soul. Keep reigning, O oh Lord. Your reign favor me. Your tenure pays me. Harabasha katabadia. Nakriba natabadia. It means so long 
As he reigns, I am sorted. Unless he is dethroned. But yes, we settle that first. He can never be dethroned. So, so long as he's on the throne, I'm sorted. And while I was told that I'll be taking this charge, what, what came to my spirit, right, is Isaiah 32, 17, Amplified Classic. And I just put a small title there. Righteousness is peace. Righteousness is peace. Righteousness is peace. We read that scripture this week based on our study, if you've been following. Please give us that scripture. Let's see it quickly. Huh? Where is this? Let's see it quickly. All right. Is that amplified classic? Isaiah 32, 17. 32, 17. The time is ticking. Oh. We read that scripture this week. Oh. I have it now. So let me see here. And the effect of righteousness will be what? Peace. Hold on. It means that if I want you to sweat, all I need to do is create heat. So long as you are in the environment of heat, you will sweat. So, if I want you to have peace, all I need to do is introduce righteousness. Oh, so it means that the believer does not learn peace. So long as he's in the atmosphere of righteousness. I don't know who is troubled. I don't know what's troubling you. Once we are in the space of righteousness, what naturally comes is peace. In fact, for a believer to be fearful, you need to learn it. If you are afraid, I can assure you. And I'll give you a quick picture of the fact that it took you time to learn to be afraid. You started considering certain things. You brought, into, you brought some parameters to play and you said, if this is happening and this happens, and since this is happening and this is not happening, you learned to be afraid. Your space in righteousness is peace. And let me tell you, the only challenge you would have not to assume this peace is that you think that for peace to come, something has to make sense. Let me tell you, in this kingdom, the job we have bought is the job of things not making sense to make sense. Our Lord Jesus, logically, died for three days. He now woke up. He now still came up in bodily form. You know why I mean? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Lazarus died four days stinking in our roads. It doesn't make sense. Red Sea. Not that a boat now carried all of them. Parted. It doesn't make sense. Let me tell you, when I came to Lagos, I have nobody nobody the only person I met, I met him once the story, let me spare you the story get into his house this was my conversation with him nobody no job, no contact nobody said come and see me tomorrow nobody I didn't know where I was turning and I told him I'll stay with you for three months and I'll get my space and I stayed with him for two months plus it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense. Why did I share that? Let me tell you. You are already in peace. The delay is because you went to buy fear. Begin to communicate the peace that you are already situated in. Are you heavy loving? Are you afraid? He said, come to me. And now you have come to him. Him and fear, they are not together. You are carrying a baggage that is alien to this territory. So, the time that is taking manifestation to catch up is the time that fear needs to go off. See where you are. See where you are. Begin to communicate it. Let me tell you, that, that fear, it must live now. It's not going to live later. It must live now. Is it about child? Is it about job? 
It's not about the economy. It's not about, see, let me tell you, the economy needs to be like this for people to know that there is another way that people thrive that is not the environment. Oh, scripture says, it says there will be cross darkness. The degree to which light is relevant is the degree to which there is darkness. So for people to understand, some of you would have to be out of job. I'm telling you, and you will survive and you will ask yourself that how it will not make sense. You, will, you are not work, when you were working, you will the life you live will not now match the time you are not working. When job now came, you will now know that job is not your sustainer. So if you now need to pick job or cry sometime, you will be bored because you've tested it. It will not be the testimony of scripture, it will be your testimony. I, I don't know who I'm speaking to. You, you have peace. You are borrowing fear. Glory to Jesus. I, 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 I hope we are blessed. I hope we are blessed. The man of God will be teaching us tonight. I don't know the dimension God will be teach, taking him through. But I want you to know. See, it's not a psych. Should I explain how the baby will come? I can't explain. It does not make sense. See, it's like speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is speaking what you don't know, but powered by God. Who can also unveil it? You don't know it. And let me tell you, speaking in tongues is not synonymous to being righteous or being born again. So you can be here. You are tongue talking, but you need to retrace. You cannot have the life of God and be fearful. It does not happen. So you might be speaking in tongues, but you need to also retrace and sit again. Speaking in tongues is just a language. And in fact, it is not only that language that is actually speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is the general speaking of what you don't know, powered by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is giving interpretation of it. So I can say, when I told that guy I will stay with you for three months, that was speaking in tongues. Speaking what you don't know, powered by the Holy Ghost, it was not both face. It was not both face. I didn't say it by wish. My wife did test for our first child. Came back and the test was negative. Blood test. Hospital. She did, and she was crying. And when I stepped in, I told her you are pregnant. Powered by the Holy Ghost. Saying what I don't know, which does not make sense. And deliberately I stayed away for two weeks. I said, go back. And they said you are pregnant. You are positive. It's positive. See, we don't have fear. We call those things that be not because we are in the one who makes things that are not to be. So who is going to prophesy your next level? It's you. So why does the devil want to give you fear so you can't call it fault? That's why. God is not going to prophesy anything. He's giving you his word. He's giving you his, brother, his prophet. It is you that will call it fault. Nobody told that man that I will stay with I told him I will stay with you for three months. I was still with you for three months at Egbeda, at the Street. It was a one room. I was still with you for three months. How did this happen? And like that, and like that. Why did I say so? I just, there's fear in somebody's heart. And the Lord is saying, this is alien. And that's the reason for the delays. And that's the reason for the delays. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. People are going to begin to speak in tongues. People are going to begin to speak in tongues. And I don't mean saying Shirababa. Comedian say Shira Baba is not tongue. Comedians say what? Shira Baba is not tongues. It, there's no particular vocabulary that is called tongues. Any vocabulary that you don't understand, powered by the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit can best the interpretation is tongues. So sometimes it's normal conversation, but it's tongues. So some of you are going to speak in tongues to yourself. Glory to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Give him all the glory. Oh, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that this evening as we have come that we will be taught of your spirit that our heart will draw closer to where you want it to be and our minds will be renewed in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus name we have prayed alright good evening church All right, so this is second service so we've had the first service alright Thank you, Pastor Olabi. That was profound. And that was a good word. Um, I want to say thank you to Pastor Ayo for having us here. Please can you help me appreciate Pastor Ayo, please? Please. Father, thank you so much, sir. And I'm sure Reverend T will be somewhere online watching also. Thanks for the privilege to always come to share here. Amen. Can you appreciate Reverend T, please? Yeah. So that I will not be queried. All right. Good evening once again. Um, I'm here to teach actually. So I'm not going to do like Pastor Olavi. He came to minister. I am here to teach. So and I'm going to teach as the Lord grant us utterance this evening. Amen. I want to appreciate every of this great house member here this evening. If they are not here, I can't teach. So thank God they came. They are my energy. Appreciate them. See how you clapped. If you don't appreciate them, I won't teach. All right. Okay, so let's get to it this evening. Father, we thank you because your word will be taught and understanding will come. We thank you for the spirit of theology in you. That our theology will be of Christ and it will not be of men. That the wisdom of men will not guide our conduct and our living. That the doctrine of righteousness as enshrined in the scriptures will be what order our steps and our understanding in you. Thank you, Jesus, for your spirit is here this evening. Amen. All right, so we, we've started a conversation in the beginning of this month, and it's been about the local church. And it's a very interesting conversation. I followed um, a few teachings. You know, I know Reverend T has been taking us. Uh, Pastor Ayo has taken us. I know Pastor Debola also did a session on Sunday. Yeah. So I, I listened in and so one thing about these teachings is that you must listen to all. It's like a curriculum. So you need to understand every bit. So whatever I'll be saying is on the foundation that they are built. And this particular series, the local church, is very, very important. I mean, it's very, very, very important. Now, I said to my friends, was it last week Sunday or two Sundays ago? You know, many a times we have people who come for counseling. I have a very few persons, young folks who call me and they want me to, you know, talk to them, do stuff. And while I was trying to talk to a few guys just about last two weeks, you know, sharing with me about their challenges and now they want to, they will need God's help, they need all of that. And I hear my spirit that there's no counseling you want to get from anybody anywhere. That is as much as being a part of a local church. So, I can't tell you, I'll just tell you a few things. I can't know you as much as your pastor. There are things that when I can't tell you about, I'll just talk more in a generic way. I'll talk as the Spirit of God helps me. But there's a place of somebody knowing you. There are things that, they are easily discerned when I know you. Now, not that the Spirit of God does not explain things to us. It's just like when your husband prays for you and when your pastor prays for you. When your husband prays for you, it's... <laughs> if you can receive it with faith, it works faster because he knows what he's talking about. So, every of the counseling you are looking for, every of the... You know, you are interested in meeting the, the best apostle in town. 
You think when you meet the best apostle in town or the training apostle in town, he's going to have one word that's going to give to you. Trust me, there's no word the apostle can give to you that is as much as you submitting yourself to a local church. So in the local church, it's where the deliverance we are looking for everywhere is. So every of those things you are desiring to have, you want to have knowledge on this, it's in the local church. As long as you are in the right local church. All right. So this evening, we want to advance to looking at honoring the body of Christ. The body of Christ. So it's a teaching. So please, pardon me if it's not going to be in quote, oligolistic. So it's, it's, it's more like we're in a Bible school. So it's on, for understanding. There's a part of it that is academic. Thank you, Jesus. You know, in recent times, this, this term gained prominence. And everybody is sent to the body. You see, this one will come. I'm sent to the body. This one, I'm sent to the body. You know, it's, it became very prominent recently. In fact, I even started hearing stuff like apostle to marketplace and stuff like that. And, you know, and while I was looking at this topic, I, that just made me laugh a bit that, you know, when, when a man begins to sense the anointing or the call of God, now, everybody has this tendency to believe you are called to correct what is going wrong in the body of Christ. Now, because you have, especially those who have a bit of prophetic or teaching grace, so there's this, there's this, there's this excitement in, in us that just feels as though you know everything that is wrong. You know, I used, to, I used to have a time when I see people preaching and what is on my mind is just, that is incorrect. This is how to go about it. This is incorrect. This is how to go about it. Ordinarily, you would think that is of God trying to help you see that, you know, what motivational people tell us that whatever you feel pain for, that's your passion. When you see somebody not wearing a good clothes and you are feeling like you should wear a good clothes, that's where your purpose is. You know, that thing can be tricky. So each time you see a pastor ministering and you, you feel, no, he's supposed to use Genesis instead of Exodus. So you feel that's your ministry. I'm sorry, that's the devil trying to call you into a ministry that is not yours. So there's that tendency of, I'm sent to the body because I have a message, a particular message. So we want to look at this evening, the body of Christ. What exactly is the body? Then how do we honor the body? Amen. You know, so, you know, the body is not, it's not a literal word. When we say the body of Christ. Now, there is the literal part to it and there is the other part to it. The literal part talking about the body of Christ. Christ coming to die for us. So now Christ comes and he died for us. He made his body. He, he, he surrendered his body that he may die. And he went to the place of death, he resurrected. And that is why we have what we call salvation. Now, you cannot understand the body of Christ if you have not understood the literal body of Christ. Now, the literal one is what I've explained. The place of him coming as a man and he died. Now, he laid down his body. Now, that laying down of his body is what brings about what we now start referring to as the body of Christ. So, the body of Christ, as it were, is not referring to his body now in the flesh. It's referring to a family. So now, because I laid down my body, that makes it possible for other people to now come and be a part of me. So like a husband and a wife, when two people get married, they lay down their body for each other and they produce a child. That child is part of their body. Do we understand that? So there's the, there is the literal part, but what we want to converse about tonight is not just the literal part, but you must understand the literal part for you to understand the one we are talking about tonight. So when we talk about the body of Christ, the body of Christ, so it's just talking about as saying, in a sense, the family of Christ. So it means what is born out of that body that was laid down. Last week I was discussing at, at ch in church about, you know, what, we have a disc discussion on the anointing. We're trying to understand what does it mean to have the anointing and who is the anointed. And we're tracing it from before the fall of man. And we saw how there was, a, there was a trajectory of sacrificial system. So from Adam, Adam and Eve, we saw a sacrificial system, a sacrifice happening after the fall. Now from Adam, we saw it went to Abraham. From Abraham, it went to the Leviticus period and to, to Mosaic and the Leviticus period, then to Christ. 
where he sacrificed himself and it was one sacrifice for the entire world. While in the others, we saw one sacrifice for either a nation, a family, or a, a community. But in Christ, we saw one sacrifice for the entire world. So that one body brings us into the body. So we become a family with Christ. So when we talk about the body of Christ, we are talking about the family of Christ. Now let's look at Hebrews 10.5. 10, Hebrews 10.5. Therefore, when Christ entered into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not des desired, but instead you have prepared the body for me to offer. Now, you have prepared a body for me to offer. So, he came and he, now let's go to Romans 10.9. He offered a body that we may become a part of his body. Romans 10.9, he says, that if you confess with your mouth that the Lord, Je of the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, this is what it means now to now come into that body. The body has been offered. He has been raised. Now, for anybody to become a part of that body, to become a part of that sacrifice that he has done, now, this is all that a man needs to do. That he confesses with his mouth and believe that Jesus is Lord. Then that person becomes a part of the body. So that's a part of the family. So when we talk about the body of Christ, we are talking about the family of Christ. Every man who has come into the place of receiving Jesus as his Lord and Savior. So it means the person in the other church out there who has confessed with his mouth that Jesus is Lord and is believing is a part of the body. Amen. So that is the body of Christ. And this body of Christ, we also call it the universal church. We call it the universal church. What it means is that everyone who has come to the place of doing this Romans 10 verse 9 becomes a part of the body. So every one of us seated here, if we have done what is in Romans 10 9, we are all part of the body. Amen. Amen. Now, we understand that now when we talk about the body of Christ. And I said the body of Christ is also what we call the universal church. Now, what we have been discussing about all from the week one of this month, we have been talking about the local church. Now, but the universal church cannot exist without the local church. Now, we are going to be looking at some things very, very critical now. And I pray that the Lord help us this evening to see this thing in our heart. The universal church cannot find expression outside of the local church. Now, this is it. The universal church is all of us. The person in Germany, the person in Korea, the person in India who has come to the place of Romans 10 verse 9. All of us. Now, the universal church does not have a GPS. It does not have a location. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't put it on Google map that you want to find that church. Because the universal church is bound by one thing. This that we have seen in Romans 10 9. But in the universal church, when we come to the place, now salvation makes every man become a member of the universal church, the body of Christ. However, salvation does not end the journey of a believer. That is where the local church comes. Now the local church is where men are now discipled. So, the local church, in the, in, the, in, the, in the universal church, salvation is what you, makes you enter into it. But for you to be a part of a local church, you need to submit yourself to discipleship. And there cannot be any expression of the universal church without the local church. Amen. Amen. So, God's design is that we become members of the body, not members of the local church. So you see, we have conversations around, we are a member of God's chamber church. Actually, that should not be the correct term that we use in the context of the local church. We are a member of the body, but we are supposed to be a disciple of the local church. But we are not seeing much of expression of that because... 
this kind of teachings are not so much elaborated these days. In fact, you can go online and Google teachings on local church. I can bet you won't find many. So when people come to church, they are not supposed to be members. You are a member of the body because that's the universal church. But you are to be a disciple in the local church. Why? Because by being discipled in the local church is when what we want to achieve with the universal church will be achieved. Now, we are going to what is now serious about why the universal church is so important. Do you know we clamor for revival? Every one of us have been clamoring, let there be revival. Let there be revival. Things are just going wrong. Let there be revival. You see, there cannot... Revival is not in those things that we see. You know, when we say there's a revival, when there's one crusade outside there now, and we have people, and we say revival has come. Now, revival is not in all of those things. There can never be revival until we understand the concept of the body of Christ and the implication of it for the local church. The actual revival is not that we are packing crusades. The actual revival is that we have men who are coming and submitting to discipleship in the local church. When we achieve that, that is when we have had revival. You see, we can have events that we have 10,000 people, that miracles are happening. I don't know, we must have had this conversation in the course of this teaching, that when we come to the local church, we don't come for miracles. When we come to the local church, we don't come for miracles. We don't come for deliverance. We don't come for all of those things. But when we gather, those things happen. But that is not why we come. Now, you see the trend these days that many people join a whole lot of a lot of prayer stuff. I respect it. I thank God for it. We need it. Now, but we must teach these things. Now, you see many people join a whole lot of movements. Why? Because there is a flow of the miraculous. So when you hear the next miraculous move in town, everybody is plugging in. Every day, everybody wants to follow this ministry. Why? Because there's a miracle. Now, that will be a revival if and only if it ends in sending those people back to become disciples in a local church. But when we have the increase of all of this movement, what we are having is men who are not disciples. Those were the same thing that came to Jesus. And they were telling Jesus after he fed them. They came the next day. Jesus said, I understand why you came. You guys are here. I understand humans. You have come for the bread. He's trying to establish us in the understanding of there's something called the local church. And men must come to... You see, when you are in a local church, miracles happen. But that is not why we come. That is not why we come. We don't come to the church because I need a child. That is not why we come. You don't come to the local church because I need a wife. That is not why we come. That is not the establishment of the local church. In fact, the local church is God's legislative arm on earth. That when we run the local church well, we can control how things go around. But when men are not submitted to discipleship in the local church, then things go wrong with the universal church. Amen. We are going to honor in the body of Christ. But we need to establish this. Reviver. Let me go to back to that. Thank you, Jesus. You see, reviver is needed now than ever before. But that reviver it's not in what we think it is. Now, let's go back to see how revival comes. Revival comes when there is unity. Revival comes when there is unity. And this is why Ephesians, let's go to Ephesians. Lord, help us this evening. Go to Ephesians 4, verse 12. Now, let's start from maybe 11 to give you the context. He said, and he himself. Now, you're going to see this. You know, I've explained the universal church, which is the body of Christ and the local church. He said, and he himself gave some to be opposed to some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's see 13. Let me see if there's anything. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, go back to 13, sir. 
Where did he say he sent these two? He sent all of these ministry gifts to where? No, sorry, 12. It's 12. 12. He says, he sent it to where? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, the ministry gifts that we see here, they are sent to the body of Christ, not to the local church. We'll see this now. And he said their, their work is that they may equip the saints and for the perfecting of, of, of the unity of faith and um, we come to the unity. So now what will now happen is when we get down and right, what will happen is that we will all be coming to the unity of faith. If we are doing this one right, this one will lead us till we come to the unity of faith. Now he sent all of those ministry gifts to the body of Christ, not to a local church. So what that means is that you see, there's no man of God anywhere that God has given the assignment of revival of the world. Now, let me go back. He sent this ministry gift to the body of Christ. It means to the universal church. He didn't send it to the local church. So, when God poured out all these ministry gifts that he has given to us, he sent them to the body of Christ. That he sent it to the universal church. So what this means is that for there to be that revival, it means that at the universal church level, we must all come to the place of unity. I'll go over it again. I don't know if you understand this. If we want to see the revival that we clamor, God did not send the ministry gift. So that means that it's not possible that there's one man of God that will come and say, God has called me to revive the world then you are already God. So God poured that assignment to the universal church. So it means that we are all now part of this universal church. So it means that there's an assignment I am doing here as the church in Ogba. There's an assignment somebody there is doing there as the church in Ibadan. There's an assignment somebody is doing there as the church in Ifako. There's an assignment somebody is doing there that when we now bring all this assignment together, we will achieve this. So, if we don't fix the local church, revival is a lie. Do we get that? So, that's how critical it is that we are doing what we are doing now. That we must get correct what it means to be a part of a local church. That if we don't do that, we are denying something that is supposed to happen at the universal level. I don't know if it was Andrew Womack. He said, I think it's Andrew Womack. He said he asked, perhaps or a Robert or one of the fathers. He said, we asked him, ah, we, we, what can he do to change the world? And he said to him, the only thing you can do is to do your assignment. Nobody can change the world. So when we understand this, we will not make... You know, Elijah felt that he was the only man. Elijah said to God, in fact, twice, he was having conversation with God. And God was trying to tell him, guy, you are not the only one. You know why? He was the apostle packing the town. He was the one who caught fire down. It was streamed live on YouTube. Everybody saw it. And everybody started joining the church of Elijah. That this is the reigning man. And Elijah said to God, he said, I am the only one that's left. He didn't know that God had 7,000 pastors. Elijah alone could not do the assignment. Now, and as men of God, if we don't come to understand this, that the assignment, you see, you will, you will think of yourself too highly. Especially when things are really happening. You will think of yourself too highly. Because you will think you know, there's a whole lot of debates going on now on Facebook, Twitter, everybody, now theologians, this and this, this and this. Because, you see, the, the, that's why the Bible says knowledge pops up. So, you know, that, that thinking that I am the one that is called to correct the body of Christ. You are not called to correct the body of Christ. You are called to fulfill your assignment in the body of Christ. And that assignment is for every one of us as part of a local church. So if we don't emphasize, you see, making people come to the fullness of the ministry God has given to them in the local church, we'll be denying the universal church the expression that God wants to see. Amen. 
Now, you see, the opposite of unity is not actually disunity as English called it. In English, it can't be disunity. But opposite of unity is actually unity in the opposing direction. I'm going to explain that. Now, the opposite of unity is unity in the opposing direction. You know, when those guys were building the Tower of Babel, what did they say to themselves? That they were going to build the Torah to meet with God. And they had it what? In their heart. And everybody was pursuing that mission. That we are going to build this. We are going to build this. We are going to build this. Then God said to himself, if I leave these guys, they will fulfill what they want to do. And what did God do? He changed their language. Now, let me ask you one question. Did their heart change? Did their heart change? Did the, did the things in their heart change? What change? Language. Now, they did not become rebellion, rebellious. They were no guys who become rebellious against their leader. Now, you think it's until somebody started, starts to be rebellious, now he's no longer in unity with you. These guys were not rebellious. But God changed their language. Now, immediately God changed their language. The central goal, they could not understand it again. That's why the scripture says, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't know if you understand that. <laughs> we're talk- we are talking about faith also recently in church. Now, faith comes by hearing. Hearing is, that hearing is not, is a koi in Greek. It's not the hearing that I'm speaking that you can hear me. Faith comes by hearing. It means understanding. And hearing by the word of God. It's not saying that faith comes when you hear the word of God. That's not what it's saying. It's saying that faith comes by hearing. But that hearing comes by the word of God. The word of God makes you understand. So, if I say to you now, and what I want to say now is that fire is going to come down here now. And this place will be in flames. And I say it, let's say, parosa franeta iga. And that's what I actually mean. What did you do? You sit down. But if I say fire is coming down now and this place will be blown off, what will you do? You run. Did you hear me the first time? But did you do anything? You didn't hear me. You only hear the hearing of the ear. So when God changed the language of those guys, what he did was that he blocked the channel that built faith in their heart that we can achieve this thing. That's why when, 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 when they started praying in the upper room, one of the first signs that God also brought was a language that was the same. He gave them tongues that all of us can now back to one language. So when he changed how they were listening, hearing, they could not understand themselves again. And that was unity in opposing direction. Even though their heart was still the same, they could no longer understand each other. So, and that is, the, that is the trajectory that the devil is throwing into the church right now. So, we are all saying we belong to Christ, but it's giving us a unity in opposing direction. So, you can be saying your Jesus is Lord, and you are fighting with a deeper life member. You can say Jesus is Lord, but you don't like the other church because they actually say something you don't like. It's trying to take us back to Babel. So until we begin to speak about these things in the local church, that may now honor what is called the body of Christ. That I know that my brethren in MFM, is still, we are still trying to do the same thing. Our language must be one. Amen. 15 minutes. We are going to honor in the body of Christ. But we need to understand these things. Now, you are very important. I want to emphasize this. You see, people in the church, you know, because the church system has been run in a way that looks as though the pastor is the star. Because we have not taught rightly what the local church really means. Do you know you guys are the ministers actually? Now, what the pastor is doing, as we see in Ephesians, is that the pastor is equipping you that you may fulfill the ministry. You are the one fulfilling the ministry. The job of the pastor is to coach you to go and fulfill the ministry. So when you go out there, you are establishing the ministry. And that is how you meet other ministers who are from different churches. Amen. So, to establish this unity, we must understand love. That's how we honor the body of Christ. We must understand love. So, I know that even though in your church, you say you must 
use scarf. In this church, we don't use scarf. Our language will not still be different. Amen. Now, love. And I'm going to explain this. You see, love fuels the unity that brings the revival that we want to see. Jonah was very passionate about, about God sending him to Nineveh. The guy did not want to go. The guy was staying back. Do you know why he didn't want to go? It was not just about, he didn't want to go because he knew God was going to be merciful. And I, I, I got to wonder, how can somebody think that way? And God now did something. God made a shade to cover him while he was under the sun. And God made it dry up. God was now telling him, okay, why are you angry? That this thing got dry up. Now, that story of Jonah was a parable to us, talking about what we are going to see in the new covenant. So God was trying to tell us that, you see, beyond knowledge, love must supersede. Beyond knowledge, love must drive our engagement when it comes to honoring the body of Christ. So you can know in your church that wearing a scarf is not wearing, not wearing a scarf as a lady may not be a big deal. Knowledge. Now, you don't go to a church where you know that the doctrine, the doctrine and the teaching of this church is this. And you say, in my own church, no, you don't know the body of Christ. Love drives us to unity. And with that unity, we can achieve the revival that we are looking for. So God began to school Jonah in what it means to be compassionate about the people. Even though you know they are sinners, God has an agenda for them. Amen. Now, let's quickly rush because of our time. The mission of the Universal Church cannot be fulfilled outside of the local church. Hmm. Okay, now, I've, I've talked a bit about how we deal with, you know, doctrinal differences. Now, because the truth is we have these challenges. Sometimes some of us ask questions. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why do we do this in this church? This one has different doctrine. Now, there are two things about the church. There is what we call administration and there is fellowship. Now, administration happens in the local church. And administration can be different. If you are in the church in the north, I can bet you there are certain things you do here you cannot do if you are in the northern states. Now, it's wisdom for the pastor who is in the north to actually have a system of administration that governs. So you cannot, you cannot now use that as a basis to define certain things. I served in the north. Well, is it even, I think it's not central. Plateau State. I think it's not central. Right. Now, but a little bit of stuff happened there. While I was serving there, I experienced a bit of all of these um, crises, Fulani, X-Men crises, and all of that. Now, there were days... We could not sleep. There were days we could not do anything that were attacked live. Not, you know, there's a lot of TV stuff. I saw it live. I saw how people were killed live on. We, we ran for our lives. I saw these things and I saw Christian who stood. I saw missionaries. I was with missionaries. I saw missionaries who, the way they greet is Og. That was when I knew Og was beyond, you know, just. They hug when they go out. Why are they doing that? I asked them, why, why do you guys hug so much? He said, this can be the last time we will see. So the way they greet normally is to hug. I became scared. I just came here to serve. I didn't come here to die. So, you know, but that was, these guys, they were into these things. Now, there were things they were doing there that is not the regular things we do here. Why? Because there are things that define how they move. There's a way you dress there. That if you dress in a certain way, you are like this, and you go out, you will not come back. So, you know, these are administrations that now affect the way we run certain things within the church. Now, the church of a 10-person member and the church of a 250-person member, there will definitely be certain differences in how we run certain stuff. Now, that administration is where we have now made God in beginning to understand our unity. But our unity must be drawn from the place of fellowship. So there's administration. There's fellowship. Our fellowship must be unto one man. is to Christ. So even though, so it means that we must be united in fellowship, but we can be different in administration. 
That's how you understand the local church. The, the universal church, rather. Amen. Amen. Do we, do we understand that? So when you begin to see certain things that differ in administrations, that's why the scripture was talking about, he said some people don't want to eat items offered to idol. He said if you're conscious, said, but you don't do certain things because of your brother. Now he's not saying that you don't have a mind of your own. What he's saying that love must overcome knowledge. Amen. So in the local church, we begin to learn. Some of us, some people believe in their local church that there's no other church that is better than theirs. That's a, that's a cult. It's not a church. Any church you are, that you are being taught as though your pastor is the only true man of God, everything happening in your church, any other church, you don't do anything with any other church, you don't do, that's not a church. That's not God's design. Because in the local church, is where we feed the universal church. Amen. Ah, damn. All right. So let me quickly go to speak about a few things. How we honor the body of Christ. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So we honor the body of Christ as we stay committed to our local assembly. Number one, how we honor the body of Christ. You don't speak, of, you don't speak ill of the church in public. You know, these days, it's very easy. Everybody's on their keypads. Pastor Adebo has said this. He's a so, 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 so man. Let me ask us a question. How many of us here, genuinely, your dad has actually been wrong in certain things? You know, ah, ah, daddy, this one you did is wrong. How many of us? How many times have you told him that he's stupid? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you tell him he's stupid? Why? It's dishonorable. But you are so intelligent in the scriptures that a pastor a pastor Kumi says certain things and you go on Twitter say kilo more it's now become very normal for us especially this new age of knowledge I'm Christocentric uh, we are this the gospel of grace and all of that we know this that you go on the public space and you begin to discuss the church it's dishonorable how many of you have discussed your parents that way And you know, there's a lot of things people you'd say and they defend it with scripture. They say this like, eh, did uh, Peter, I mean, Paul, not, not judge Peter and the devil and this. Since Peter, uh, Paul did that to Peter, how many times have you done it to your parents? It's dishonor. You see, most of us, if we even see that person, if some of us see Baba the way now, in our front, that is, that, you, you will you will just but you know you are so intelligent in the scriptures that see what you are doing is that you are you are unplugging the graces in the body god said he has sent men to the body it's not to your local church alone so there's the place of honoring your local church pastor there's not the place of honoring the body because there are men sent to the body so you don't even when they are wrong the thing is, okay, if I, if I tweet on Twitter now, ah, ah, Pastor Adeboye, no, this is wrong. You see, Genesis 1 said this. You see, sir, if you go to, he does not even know me. He does not see it. How does he, how does he, how does he? For everybody present here and everybody listening to me, everybody, everybody that's going to listen, I'm begging you, never be found in such position. You know, the last year election showed us a lot of errors in the church. Now people were saying, so people went to take what they bought to the church. I told them in SGH, please, for anybody that, that buys anything in the church now, a sign. I will never, once I give it to the church, it can never be taken again. Any day I want to take it, imprisonment me. Because it doesn't make sense. Because somebody does not support a particular candidate, you say you take what you, you know why that is? Because these are people who have not understood what it means to be a part of a local church. They are not disciples. They are members. So, as a church, we must be very big on making disciples. No, it must be disciples. My own vision for any church is that at every time, 98% of all those seated in the church must be active workers in the church. That when we say workers, wait behind, only two persons stand up. And he, ah, what's going on here? I want to join. 
You must be an active disciple in your church. A disciple is somebody who is submissive, submitted to learning. You are there in your church. Some of you don't even know what's going on in your church. Your church is doing program. The flyer, you cannot post it. But the biggest apostle in town is coming next week. The flyer is all over. You don't even know that you guys have program this evening in your church. Amen. You don't speak ill of the church in public. Why is this time running? Number two, you pray for the body. 2 Thessalonians 3, 1-2. You pray. You pray for the body. So when you see things that are going wrong with any of our fathers, any pastor, it can even be your pastor. It can be your pastor. Anything can go wrong when you see it. And it's somebody you cannot necessarily approach one-on-one and talk and have a conversation. What do you do? You go on your knee and pray. Father, we commit Pastor Kumi into your hands. Lord, is strengthened. He's restored. That's how a disciple responds to the things that goes on in the body. He does not have to be a pastor of your church. Paul was not in the church of Ananias. Ananias was used to restore Paul. So you don't need, you doesn't need to be, as long as this person is bearing the name of Christ, you go on your knees and pray for him. You pray for the church. You pray for your pastors. I saw a pastor wrote this one. He said, pastoring is not easy. You know, it's very easy for people who are not doing it. Like my former pastor said, when they anointed him to become pastor, he said he went to buy, he went to buy higher education. And he went to pray. He wanted to write all the message you preach from January to December. He thought that's how, that's how it works. You know, it can be a lot. You are there trying to see God, what's the right word for the people? What's the right message for the people? You are praying, you are trying to see this person's problem is your problem and all of that. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray. When you hear of somebody doing something great in the body of Christ, respond in prayer. Hey, that this man, I heard, was it yesterday on Tuesday, Apostle Joshua said, man, me, um, delivered something at Avad. Do you know some people have problem with it? I saw it on Twitter and I'm like, ha, what kind of spirit is this? So when you see such things, what do you do? You pray. Lord is strengthened. He do, he's going to do much more. He, as he's presenting that thing, people will follow that they are anointed. They will give their life to Christ. That's how we respond. It doesn't have to be your pastor. It doesn't have to be you. Amen. Number three. Commit to giving. Commit to giving. It's an essential part that we don't really, personally, I don't love to talk about. You know, when you talk giving, people just go off. They think it's about money. Now, giving here is not just about money. You must give your time. Ah, you will give your time. I've made a covenant with God. Any job that will not allow me to serve in church, I cannot take it. I don't know the amount you want to pay me. That's my value system. That's my value system. So, my time is for the Lord. If I get a call from my pastor, <laughs> I don't know what I can be doing. I'm telling you, that's how much of giving to the Lord I personally have consecrated myself. You must give. The more you give to your local church, you are helping the body of Christ. Because your contribution in your church, when you come together and you begin to minister, you are feeding under your man of God, you are doing what he asks you to do. What you are doing is you are feeding the entire body because there is no body without a unit. You must give. Financially, you give to the work. MIM is coming, you give to it. This one is coming, you give to it. You give your time, you volunteer. What is it that we need to do in church? I, I, I'm good in editing. Is there any way I can serve? I'm good in this. Give your time. Give the things you have. Many of us do church work because it's, volu- it's a voluntary work. You know, we do it with, with this attitude and people begin to force us. And it gets at me. How do we force you to work in church? I was telling them on Sunday, if you have an appointment at the embassy, you rush. But when it is church, it's because you have not understood honoring. My time is up. Now, I'll just say this lastly. You evangelize it. 
You know what you do when you change your address? When the address of your house changes, what do you now start doing? You start updating different places. Updating. When your address change to the kingdom, you said they have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. When your address change, you are supposed to also update everywhere. So you begin to bring other people into the body. You are not in the body just to sit down. You see, many of us think evangelism is for evangelists in the house. We have evangelism department in church. So many of us just say, let the, evang- the people who are in evangelism unit go. No, sir. We are all in this business together. So because your address has changed, you need to update it everywhere. That's your work in the body. That you now begin to invite other people into the house. Let's stand up on our feet. And that's where I'm going to leave now. That you make a commitment tonight that... You, you, you see, when something is lovely, you want to call other people to it. How do you be a part of a body? If you have the opportunity to join Shell today and they are paying you well, and you have the opportunity to, to bring other people, won't you invite them to come and be a part of that company? So why is it that you have not invited anybody to be a part of this body, to be a part of the Universal Church? It's your assignment. That's how you show that you honor this body because you know that this thing is, is, is good. It's good enough. Some of you will say, my, 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 I'm, I'm, just, I'm just an instrumentalist. My own is just, I just sing. No. Your assignment is to evangelize it. You bring men into the body when you are part of the body. So I'm leaving you with that, that the Lord will help you. And you ask yourself, how many people have I brought into this body? How many people have I brought into the fold? That's one of the ways to honor the body. I want you to examine yourself tonight and make a commitment to God that this year, we are still in March, April by Monday, that this year I'm going to bring somebody into this body. That's how to show that you honor it. That's how you show that when you meet somebody you love, you want everybody to meet that person. So there must be a commitment to this body, the universal church. It's not about God's chamber. This is about bringing somebody into the family of Christ. So you must make a commitment and say, Lord Jesus, help me, help me how to show that you really honor the body that you bring men into that same family that the Lord will help you can you just pray 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 talk to God Commit yourself to becoming a disciple indeed. That you cease to be a member, you become a true disciple. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we receive your help, we receive your grace to commit, to give our all. In the name of Jesus. That we will live all. We will live all. We will deny all. And we will cleave to you. And we will give ourselves to you fully. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What we have had tonight is the truth and nothing but the truth. And we would, we would be doing ourselves so much good if we take this. Because this is the essence of why we are here. We are not here for the miracles and the healing and the deliverances, the husband, the wife. That is not it. This is the real reason why we are here. And if you, are, if you want to take anything home, I want you to take this, to add this to whatever you're taking home. Love must be the motivation for you as a member of the local church. Love must be the motivation. It must be the driving force for whatever you do. Amen. Let's have a seat and um, package our offerings as the ushers wait on us. You can use any of the platforms that is displayed on the screen to give your offerings. I want us to listen to this announcement as we do that. Hallelujah. Man in the Mirror 2024 is here. Hallelujah. We are not excited. We are not showing our excitement. Praise the Lord. Man in the Mirror is here. This is um, a global conference that is holding. It's starting on the 15th to 19th of May. This is one program that you want to prepare for you want to give towards, you want to commit yourself to it. Hallelujah. 
So we want us to engage um, our social platforms by liking, commenting, and sharing all of our um, MIM-related um, information that will be shared. Praise the Lord. If you're here and you're yet to join any MIM prayer group, you are wrong. You are wrong. You are wrong. Participation is part of what we do in the local church. So you need to participate. Join the days, just a day, Mondays to Friday. You can join any of the days to, um, to pray concerning MIM. Praise the Lord. So if you want to do that, you can join. The information are displayed across all our social media platforms. Please ensure that you engage that particular information by joining a prayer group. Praise the Lord. We also want to inform us that you can give to us MIM in cash, in service, or in kind. Whatever it is that you have, please ensure that you're committing to this program. Praise the Lord. I don't want to say that it's God's way of blessing you. But as, as a member of the local church, we know that participating in all the church programs is our responsibility. Outsiders will not come and do it for us. We do it. We own it. Praise the Lord. The 31 days of praise in the month of March continues with two praise watches, 6 a.m. and 12 noon. Ensure you are plugged in. Praise the Lord. The company of Prophet Cubs will present a two-hour spontaneous worship experience themed in spirit and in truth. Date is 29th of March, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Please come and lavish your love on the Father. Hallelujah. Then, um, okay, we also want to announce that Global Women Prayer Network will be having a meeting by next month. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, the theme is when storms show up in your relationship. It's going to be an empowerment program. And we're going to learn more about how to manage relationships and stuff like that. We have um, Pastor Debola Limoshe is the host. We have Sister Tochi Abiyahu and um, Aditutu Oshofowora as our guest. I pray that the Lord bless you as you came to these meetings in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Can we be on our feet as we bring the service to a close? As we go tonight, I want you to say this, to make this pledge that I'll be a committed member of my local church. I will give my all. I will not be on the sideline. I'll be giving, I'll be at the heart of my local church in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We pray that as we go today, we receive the grace to put into practice all that we have heard, all that we have learned, that we'll become committed to this assignment in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we have a closing confession? Hallelujah. Let's go. I confess that I'm a supernatural being, an example to the world in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. I give attention to the study and meditation of the word. I give myself entirely to it, that my progress may appear to all. I bring forth of the grace of God upon my life to positively influence my environment. I, Oluwabu, may grow and increase daily as I walk in the spirit and operate by the spirit. I am marvelously helped because my help is in the name of the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a pleasant night.